Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential logarithmic equation. So we have x to the power log x plus 7 divided by 4 equals 10 to the power log x plus 1. And we're going to be looking for x values. So let's go ahead and take a look at this expression. There's a couple ways to approach this problem. The first method that I'd like to use involves substitution. So let's start with the first method. I do notice that the log x repeats, so I'm going to go ahead and call that something. How about setting log x equal to L, a capital uppercase L, okay? So let's go ahead and write our expression as, and obviously this has a consequence if log x is equal to uppercase L, since the base is 10, from here we can write x equals 10 to the power L. Now let's go ahead and replace x with 10 to the power L, and that is raised to the power L plus 7 over 4, and that equals 10 to the power L plus 1. Awesome. Now we have the exponent of an exponent, or power of a power, or superpowers. So we can go ahead and multiply these. That gives us 10 to the power L squared plus 7L, divided by 4 equals 10 to the power L plus 1. Now the rest is fairly easy because we have the same bases and the same exponents must follow, right? So we have to have the same exponents, otherwise these numbers are not going to be equal. So here's what I'm trying to say. If a and b are different, then 10 to the power a cannot equal 10 to the power b. Make sense? Okay, so they have to be the same. So from here we get l squared plus 7l over 4 equals l plus 1. Awesome. And then we can go ahead and cross multiply. And that's going to give us 4L plus 4 on the right hand side. And if you subtract 4L plus 4, putting everything on the left hand side to get a quadratic, we get L squared plus 3L minus 4 equals 0. Remember, we talked about this very many times in different videos. When you have a polynomial whose sum of coefficients equals 0, then 1 is a solution. So this is exactly what happens here. If you look at the coefficients 1 plus 3 minus 4, then we get 0. That indicates L equals 1 is a possible solution. So that kind of makes factoring or solving easier, but this is just quadratic. You might as well just use the quadratic formula or just factor it because this is a factorable trinomial. So we can write it as L minus 1 times L plus 4 equals 0. So the fact that I used here to factor it was finding two numbers whose product is negative 4 and whose sum is 3. And those numbers are 4 and negative 1. Negative 1 brings in L minus 1 and positive 4 brings in L plus 4. Make sense? We already knew L equals 1, so this is kind of verified one more time. And now from here we get another solution. L equals 1 and L equals negative 4. Now, is L equals negative 4 a valid solution? Because with logs, we have to be careful, right? So whenever you have something like log x, you have to make sure that x is positive, right? Because the log function for real numbers is only defined when x is positive. It's not even defined at 0. But of course, if you're dealing with complex numbers, then you can uh, extend this uh, to another domain. So, we got two solutions so far, and let's see if they work. And I said, okay, x has to be positive, but L is not x. L is log x. So that's why we have to back substitute and solve for x, because that's the original variable. So, let's go ahead and do it. L equals log x, and we know log x is equal to 1. From here we get x equals 10. Again, the base is 10, so by using the definition of logs, or you can do 10 to the power of both sides to get the answer. Make sense? So that you could call it L sub 1 if you want, doesn't really matter. And L sub 2 is again log x, but this time it's negative 4 using this value. And then if log x is negative 4, then we have the base 10, so x becomes 10 to the power negative 4. You can definitely write this as 1 over 10,000. The number of 4 uh, is the number of zeros, basically. 
So that gives us a very, very small solution. Make sense? I hope it does. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. So notice that x being negative, or I mean l being negative, did not cause any issues because it's not x. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method and see how that differs from the first one. They're not very much different, but uh, we could also talk about alternative approaches here, like kind of 2a and 2b maybe. So let's go ahead and take a look at the original problem one more time. 10 to the power, what do we have? I'm sorry, not 10. We have an x on the left-hand side, don't we? Okay, I, th I think if we had x to the power log x plus 7 over 4 equals 10 to the power log x plus 1, if I'm not mistaken. Let me double check. Yep, that's correct. So this is our equation. And here's what we're going to do. Obviously, when you see x to the power log x, that has a special meaning that kind of tells you, hey, you should log both sides. So anytime you have a problem like this, 10 to the power log x equals 100, I don't know. Logging both sides would definitely be helpful for two reasons at least. First of all, uh, when you log both sides, you're going to bring down the log, which uh, gives you another log x. And then uh, also logging a power of 10 will be helpful because we're dealing with base 10 here. Make sense? So for these kinds of equations, it's pretty much standard logging both sides. And then that's what I'm going to do. But before that, I want to show you something. 10 to the power log x plus 1 is actually somewhat special. Even though it kind of looks exponential, it's not. If I graphed it and showed you, you would see what I'm talking about. And if you can easily graph it on Desmos or any other graphing tool. But here's what it is. 10 to the power log x plus 1 can be written as 10 to the power log x times 10. And what is 10 to the power log x? So you may not know what it is. Let's go ahead and derive it one more time. Suppose you set it equal to y. And then you're going to uh, log both sides. Let's do it. Log 10 to the power log x equals log y. Bring this to the front. You're going to get log x times log 10, which is log x times 1. And log x equals log y, which means y equals x. y equals x just means 10 to the power log x equals x. So anytime you see something like this, you can pretty much immediately say that um, this is equal to x. But with one caveat, x needs to be positive. If x is negative, this is not true for real numbers. So this is x. So that gives us 10x. Awesome. Let's continue from there. 10 to the power log x, by the way. So we have 10 to the power log x plus 1 equals 10 to the power log x times 10. And that's equal to x. So this becomes 10x. But where does that come from? It comes from the left-hand side. x to the power log x plus 7 over 4 equals 10x. And then you can go ahead and do the following. Divide both sides by x. And you're going to get this. And then subtract the exponents. This is x to the first power. Minus 1. And then if you make a common denominator, this gives you x to the power log x plus 7 minus 4, which is plus 3. Divide by 4 equals 10. And then you can just proceed from there. But at this point, or at any point, it will be helpful to log both sides. So let's go ahead and do it here. Log here and log here. Let me make some room for the log. Oops. Log 10. And then here, this guy is going to move to the front. Log x plus 3 over 4 times log x equals 1 because log 10 is 1. And then calling this t, t plus 3 times t equals 4. t squared plus 3t minus 4 equals 0. And from here, you get log x values. t equals 1, which is log x, which means x equals 10. Or t equals negative 4, which is log x. And this means x equals 1 over 10,000. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.